Good morning then and welcome back to Thought for the Day. We're looking at uh, our last session in Ephesians today and that's from uh, chapter 6 and verses 21 to uh, 24. Before we do that, we're going to open in prayer. Let's pray. So gl glorious Father, as we come to you this morning, we ask that you'd help us just as we close this letter to the Ephesians, Lord, that you'd help us to understand well, your, your goodness and kindness to us, Lord. Um, we thank you, Lord, that we can trust you to open your word for us. We thank you that the Holy Spirit will be at work in us. And we praise you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me read to you then the closing verses of Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verses 21 to 24. Tychicus, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you everything so that you also may know how I am and what I am doing. I am sending him to you this, for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage you. Peace to the brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. So then we come today to our closing verses in, in Ephesians. Uh, and these last verses round off the letter um, nicely, showing us the caring nature of Paul. Now, we live in times uh, when posting a letter to someone is an easy job. In, in Paul's day, there was no postal service. Um, so any letter that needed to be taken to its dest would need to be taken to its destination by someone willing to travel. And on this occasion, Tychicus is the uh, person of choice. Uh, Tychicus is both a dear brother and a faithful servant in Christ and that in and of itself is no small accolade is it Paul has known what it is to be abandoned by fellow Christians who have had a greater love for the things of this life um, for the things of Christ so to have a fellow Christian that you can rely on is a great a blessing and a gift and Tychicus has taken part in the team that went with Paul towards Macedonia so he's uh, been with Paul he spent time with Paul he has been about the ministry um, so Paul has had time to prove him in that sense. And he was also in the running, here, Paul take, so taken by Tychicus, that he was also in the running for taking on the church at Crete um, after Titus um, is uh, called away. And we know that from the letter to Titus. Now Tychicus could therefore be trusted to give an accurate report to the Ephesian church um, as to Paul's own condition and his situation. Um, more than that, uh, Tychicus could encourage the believers there in the things of Christ, and Paul has great confidence in him to go and to be able to do that. Now, whilst many things uh, can be related through the written word, it's hard, isn't it, to relay passion and to even give a sense of joy that might be in the work. And so Paul entrusts to Tychicus this task of taking the letter, which is full of all the instruction that the Lord has given to Paul, um, but he's also going with that personalised message, that understanding of what's happening, so that, he, that they can really see or hear f firsthand from one who's experienced it with Paul, the things that have been going on. So there is that level of love and grace and care in um, Paul's final um, words. So the first question then I would ask then is, do you have a good Christian friend that you can rely on? On. It's very good, it's, it's the best thing really to have people around you that you can depend on, those that are excited about the things of Christ, um, that you know that you can uh, be busy about the work in and that you can share your work uh, that you're doing for the Lord Jesus Christ um, both it, with them and through them. Um, so do you have that? Have you got a good Christian friend? If you haven't, make the effort to go and, and make one. Paul then concludes the letter with a greeting. Um, peace or shalom well well-being is asked for on behalf of the church now while this might have been a fairly standard um, way of finishing a letter Paul as he was directed by the Holy Spirit uh, did not waste words these you know it's not just he's, he's come to the end of his letter and he's just simply put the same um, postscript as uh, as everyone else he's actually meaning everything that he writes they they were all meant and they're personal to that church the ephesian church his heart's desire for the church was that they would be whole um, that they would be spiritually whole and blessed by god um, so that's an encouragement isn't it to think that paul was concerned about the churches in such a way so the second question comes then do you regularly ask god's blessing his shalom on the church that you're involved in or the churches that you know 
uh, the one that you're a member of, uh, remembering that this whole letter is written to the bride of Christ, to the, to the one whom God uh, loves and is making right. He also wants them to know love with faith, which comes um, as a gift from the Father and the Son to uh, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this love with faith is that dynamic which means that we live and we follow Christ, not by duty as, as though or as though we were under a spell, um, but as one moved by God and his love displayed in Christ uh, with compassion and a tireless enthusiasm. So, um, you know, we all need that, don't we? We need that level of uh, love and faith working out in our lives um, in order that we might be those Christians that uh, uh, can bring praise and glory to, to God. So then he closes by asking for grace. That's God's unmerited favour to be poured out on all who love Christ with an undying love. So the third question, I suppose, is this, is do we love Christ with an undying love? Now, the only way that we will love Christ in that way is if we have realised that he loves us with such a love. Um, the only reason that we can love is because he has first loved us. And if we haven't grasped that, if we haven't understood who the Lord Jesus Christ is, then we know no we're not going to experience that grace and favour, uh, that uh, unmerited favour that comes from God. So we need to grasp the love that is given to us. And then uh, as Paul prays for those believers there in Ephesus, and, and as we pray for ourselves and for others, um, we want to experience that undying love that we are, are so taken up with the Lord Jesus Christ that all other things in life um, are put into their right perspective. I trust that that is true of you, certainly praying it for you. Um, let's pray, shall we? Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, your word comes to us and that it is rich in, in many ways. We thank you that it tells us of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, the way that he willingly went to the cross on our behalf. He willingly paid sin's debt. He, he, was, uh, uh, he completed that task and was raised to life. And we praise you for these things. We ask that we might have that undying love for the Lord Jesus Christ and Lord that we might live and work in this in this life and doing doing all things for the Lord Jesus Christ so we pray that you'd help us with this today for Jesus sake amen so today was the last day of Ephesians um, tomorrow we move on to look at uh, uh, the Roman road you'll discover a bit more about that from Tony tomorrow um, morning um, and then uh, um, hopefully by the 1st of December we'll start looking at some things um, related to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ or, or the story around the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. So bye for now.